Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Let's get out of that tavern and what were remember there is something uh gift. Gift. Is there something about the gift? Parking brewery, marketplace, um it's and then expedition hall. I have no idea. But apparently there is something. Wait, I still have the plot, right? Okay, this one. Companion, no, oh, yeah, this one. I need you to deliver a hole for current to sell. You will not speak to you unless you know the words. Not this one. Uh, not this one. Um. Mm -mm -mm. No, I don't know. Page one of travel started not. I thought it was this one. Hmm. Call for current. Current. Like, I don't know. Gordy. Over here, miss. A young boy watches the passerby and counts a grimy handful of coins. His face and arms are smudged with dirt, but except for the grass stains, his clothes are in good condition. As you approach, he blinks and makes a quick, furtive effort to pocket his coins. The boy stares at you, his mouth hanging open. After several seconds frozen in silence, he squints and mumbles, Was that on your head? He snaps out of his trance but continues to watch you with fascination. Hey, miss, want to know a secret? He wipes his nose from his sleeve. I know a real good secret. Careful, I have traveled the continent and the hardest bargains still come from my seven-year-old. <laughs> really? What is it? He shrugs and clasps his hands behind his back, kicking a loose pebble. I just saw a fox hiding some really neat things. I could show you where, but mom and dad told me not to talk to strangers. His eyes slowly roll up at you. That maybe you could help me with something, then we wouldn't be strangers. Help with what? Gordon's voice suddenly rises in pitch and tempo. The Christmas night nice city is dark is made out of weird march steel. It's been a steel around, uh, except for dirt and steel, which doesn't count because no one makes it anymore. He steps long enough to catch his breath. Anyway, there's this merchant over by the expedition hall and he gets a dagger made, made of real marsh steel. His eyes grow large and round. He said he wouldn't sell it to me because I'm a kid and kids don't know anything about daggers. But that's not true. I know lots of daggers. I know about the different kind of steel. I know about the crucible knights make them in a forge. I know that the tip can pierce whole gold scale armor and that one that's good and sharp and cut for bone. See, I know plenty about daggers and I really really want this one. And if you could just get it for me, I promise I'll never ever ask anyone for anything again ever again. In Masuk, we begin training our daughters with the haunted knife as soon as they can talk. Many can feel dress a hair before their tenth birthday. She frowns. I wouldn't trust this kid with a butter knife. You're too young to play with knives. I'm sure you have, your parents told you that or you wouldn't be asking me. But if I'm going to be a real warrior, I have to start training young, just like the heroes in the stories. I just know I was a great warrior in previous life. My mom even says I was an old soul. Fine, I'll help you. Gordy jumps up and down, whooping and hollering. I knew a r real adventurer would understand. He points to a large building. There's a big merchant over by Admeth's den who sells weapons. He's the one with dagger. I'll wait right here for you. His gut toothy grin stretches from ear to ear. Okay, I wouldn't trust him with dagger either. But I still do want to find a guy. Oh, let's see this place first because he won't go anywhere, I suppose. Crumbled loaves and shredded fires float on the waters. Oh, I can talk right now. Hmm. 
crumbled loaves yet again. Do you have a name to you? Dalton. This elderly man paces back and forth, taking short, hobbled steps. His gaze is distant, and beneath it are the dark rings of many restless nights. He appears to be having a conversation with someone who isn't there. And the way you fought, cutting down two at a time, we shared quite a victory, you and I. Who are you talking to? The man looks up at you, startled. My, oh, oh, by the flame. Just for a moment I thought I heard her. He puts a hand on his chest, catching his breath. What troubles you? Just the memories of my youth in the North Northward Rangers, trials and adventures from a lifetime ago. He shakes his head. Of late, the memory of lost battles and fallen friends has been especially vivid. Tell me about these memories. It's been nearly sixty years. You were known throughout the day with them. We fought with the adventure together forever, collecting coppers and inspiring songs. The wrinkles around his eyes deepen. That was until we faced Healy Goftein. He was a wizard whose experiments in necromancy left a trail of bodies, some reanimated, from Sola's Vale to Midwood. We tracked him as he fled toward the Valian Republics, catching him just west of the Lake of Drowned Tombs. We were fools. Seasoned as we were, we were not prepared for foul magic. Our numbers were nothing against his power. A wiser man would have ordered a retreat. Not me. By some curse of the gods, I was knocked out, and when I woke, my rangers, my Rowena, they were all dead. He holds empty air in his arms. Who is Rowena? My friend, my comrade in her arms, and my love. We'd planned to adventure together until we grew old enough to settle down and enjoy our fortunes. Young as we were, we couldn't imagine anything would tear us apart. I know this sounds like an old man's madness, but I hear her. A voice just over my shoulder, calling to me in my dreams. At night, I see her wandering the catacombs beneath the city, trying to escape. Foolish as it sounds, I can't shake the idea that she's somehow down there, waiting for me. I've even fetched below, though in them near cost me my life. He hesitates. When I half the warrior I was in my youth, I would search every grave and rat hole. As it is, I'm stuck with this feeble body and the agonizing notion that my love is somehow down there, beyond my help. I will search the catacombs for a sign of Rowena. Tears spring to the old man's eyes. There's an entrance just southwest of here, on the other side of the canal. He sniffs and wipes his eyes. You're truly a gift from the gods, if there's anything you can find of her. Yeah. So, oh, you're probably here. Sure. Although it sounds like a, some kind of wraith. Or anything else like that. As you approach the dead man, you can feel the faint traces of his soul lingering, a stunned uncertainty holding in it in place. When you near, without warning, the soul hurries towards you, as though you were a solitary light in the dank gloom of this place, come to usher it away. Its essence invades your consciousness. You are in a different body now, walking deeper into the catacombs, cloaked in a dark robe with a mask pulled over your face. You're following a familiar path along the canal, heading to a room built around a statue of a figure wearing a robe much like yours. Others wait, clothed in hoods and shadows. Ahead is another figure dressed like you, traveling in the same direction. You don't know his name, but that's how it's supposed to be. Out of the darkness, something monstrous grabs the other figure. You turn to flee, but find yourself face to face with a troll. 
The panic pounding through your brain is interrupted by razor-edged teeth and calls. You snap yourself out of the dead man's memory. The corpse lies on the damp and grimy ground. His hood and mask are missing and his clothes are shredder, shredded. Sagani draws up next to you. You're right. Looks almost like you'd lost your footing for a minute. <laughs> well. It happens from time to time. She orders you quietly. You really are a watcher, aren't you? Once in a great many generations, one of my people is born with the ability to speak to souls. Usually, each such individuals become elders, or a lone set of tracks in the snow. She cocks her head. I would have thought my journey would be easier if I could see what you see. But looking at you, I am not so sure. Neither am I. Believe it or not, I would I once would have rejoiced to know I would be picked to travel far in search of something great. But even these gifts come with a cost, don't they? Forgive me if I was a little less skeptical of your abilities before. I can say I, I have met a real watcher before. <laughs> oh, don't worry about her. She just likes doing that from time to time. Seems to cheer her up. So I just let her. Once you've seen sorry. Once you've seen it a few times, the shock wears off. <laughs> Every time she goes a little strange in the face, I try to see if I can hear anything. Kana grins. It hasn't worked so far. Let's see if you can get her to tell you what the spirit said. No. <laughs> you guys have way too much fun with that. Viscous, foul smelling slash apps in the trench. I can hear this thumping and there's this. The Usus really hate the guy. I mean, Durance. They really hate him. Uh, no, 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 not like this. Thank you. There's a troll, alright. Mm, everyone who's not a fighter, melee fighter, I mean, goes away. one of those trolls, I assume there will be more, like a lot more. I thought I heard some weird noises. Disengage. You're doing fine. a little bit first. Let... Grave, 
dark spore. Oh, it's already badly injured. Just a rod and bones. Nothing unusual. Oh, another duck spore. You see, he's now, I don't know, he's confused and his circle changed, but for some reason they don't always do that, I think. Oh. I think they are. Oh, they are not together. Wood, woody kahoot. Oh, this interesting. Let's give it to your. Man, everyone. How much stuff do I? Oh, it's no trouble. Yeah. How much stuff do I need? Because I don't walk everywhere crouching. You know. I must admit, this is a really annoying feature they decided to go with. Because in Terrani, you just have to walk past something to see to detect something. The small Orlan man appears to have pulled together some crates and scraps of cloth to make a rather sorry looking little camp. The thick fur on his limbs is matted and his clothing smeared with blackening grime. He looks startled as you enter, his eyes widening in alarm. Good day to you. After a moment, however, he smiles quickly. Hello there. Wasn't expecting any visitors down in these parts. He glances around the dim room. Uh, have you seen a woman named Rowena? Aaron shakes his head. Sorry, but I don't know anyone by that name. I know I'm not the only one down here, however. I hear voices now and then from across the canal. Sounds like they're coming from the northwest. Aeon nods in greeting. Oh, is there anything else I can do? What can you tell me about these cataloons? <laughs> I haven't explored too much of it, to be honest. Got lucky finding this little corner of it, but... Let me think. Well, the canal there, that's Gorgon's canal. Gorgon was the dwarf that planned the whole thing. It runs up through to Ondra's gift, spills out into the sea there. Otherwise, it's just a lot of bones. There's the warrens for people who that couldn't afford better, but it's all flooded now. The fancier folks, they have their own resting places down here, drier places. The ducks of the Deerwood are down here, actually, if you want to pay your respects. What are you doing down here? I've <laughs> been a little down on my luck lately, didn't have anywhere to stay, so I thought I would come down here. Nobody pokes around in the catacombs much, not until you, anyway. There are less dangerous places to live as a meager life. You're hiding from something. Or someone. Iron looks around the dingy chamber and not slowly expression pain. Yeah, I guess that's plain enough to see. <sighs> Very well, it's true. I've been hiding from the night down here, but it isn't what you think. He ducks his head. It was an accident. It's been hard for me here in Defiance Bay. I suppose I thought if I got involved in city business, if if I made the right friends, it would get easier in time. And it did, really. I made a name for myself. A place. People actually listen to me when I talk. Well, they used to. People can get very passionate about these things. We were discussing... I think it was shipping agreements. Of all the things to fight over. But this one night, this man, he... He got very angry. I think maybe he would have a little too much at the inn. And I guess he didn't like an Orlon talking back at him. I struck him. 
he came towards me and I hit him, but and he went over like a tree. I guess he struck his head on the way down. Eon lowers his gaze and tracks helplessly. Turns out he was a knight. The crucible knights won't care how it happened. They just want me gone. They won't let me live long enough to see the rope. Please. He looks at you with a pleading expression. I just want to get out of this city. The second I can get money for passage, I won't trouble anyone again. I swear it. I'll live quietly. But you can't. <laughs> Please, you can't tell them I'm here. Here. This should be enough to buy your passage out of the Defiance Bay. Eon stares at you in disbelief. But, but this is... His face twists as he struggles for words. They said you were a kind soul, but I wouldn't have imagined. This will see me out of the city and well away. I'm not sure I could ever thank you enough, but here, take this. I hope it's some use to you on your journey. Uh, you have my lasting gratitude, friend. I, I should get ready. What do you mean, new, new task? Oh no, it's done. Oh, okay, we get some more lockpicks. The smoldering fire is strewn with the meager remains of a recent meal, fish bones, a mold triad of cheese, and the blackened bread crusts. Dear sisters, do you still remember your first deliverance? When you strangled your first wrongdoer, did you see the moment when life became death? Could you see the instance when your victim realized that Wodika forgets nothing? When Wodika takes back her throne, you will face her with pride, knowing you have held your own oaths, or will you be amongst the world breakers? Wodika teaches vengeance and memory, and while she is in exile, we must be her eyes and ears that let no injustice slip from record. We must be clenched first. The fist that silences the lying breath. When Wodika takes back her throne, all of the injustices that have slipped through the cracks of history will be righted. The villains hiding in plain sight amongst the innocent will feel the burned queen's stalking grasp. Pray that you live to see the day when you will join our queen in this cleansing of the wicked. But no, my sisters, we must be ready to see the end of our days without the return of our queen. For she will take back her throne, but it may be our daughters that serve the restored court. We must continue to live as we have always lived, hated by the other fates, even though we place justice above our own well-being. At least the Empire of Aether still holds our creed in proper esteem. It is a proper sign of respect that, by imperial custom, our clergy must oversee a contract for it to be legally binding. For who else understands the value of remembering warm oaths than Wodika's faithful? And let us not count our current blessings, for we still enjoy the support of the Paladin Order of the Steel Garot. They too understand that society is built and broken by the oaths and rules of its people. When Wodika takes back her throne, my family will know that I was right to commit my life to the exiled queen. When Wodika takes back her throne, the strangler will stop being a story told to frighten our daughters, but a hero woven into parables that teach our children justice. When Wodika takes back her throne, she will bring her fullest memory with her. Every transgression, every crime, and every injustice will be revealed. When Wodika takes back her throne, even gods won't be spared their due retribution. That sounds lovely. The wobbly little tent is barely standing. Uh, by the way, we do have some new items, I believe. Hence, properties of great multiplier bonus. Oh, that will be good for you. I mean, to confuse of intellect plus two, that's for you. Uh, of intellect, of resolve, you already have one, I think the same. No, of reflex. Uh, does it give you anything? Not really. There you go. And you have new grimoire to learn. Okay. Ooh. 
The crackling bolt. I like that. Can you learn? Wait, what did I do? Yes. It's not that I took away your spells. No, uh, he should have his own grimoire. Oh, uh, grimoire. Yeah. But oh, yes. So now we have all those spells that he knows. Sunless grasp. Hmm. Okay. So basically, I can sell all the re the remaining memoirs, I think. Or I could have different spells prepared in the memoirs. Nope. I can hit him properly. Wait, where am I? Okay, now. already thank you oh there's another one okay is there anything else no great fine scale armor okay let's give it to you yeah I am paying my respects right now as you can see Okay, and then, then, then let's go over here quickly. I don't like the fact that he went the other way. Although he will do help us scout the rest of the space. So it's not that, hor that horrible. It could have ended badly. Mm, you do your things. Can you guys keep on shooting? Okay. Another black ooze. Ooh, I don't like that. Keep on healing. Why are you not helping them? Oh, because you cannot go. here. Actually, I should disable the fast mode. Come on. If only I can start hitting the corked button. this part over here and this is yeah it's another huge place just a tomb hm. yeah oh could have been worse stuck helm come on take it i don't like that sound Okay, let's see. Uh, athletics of dexterity. So I'll give it to you. Uh, this is medium armor. Are you using one? You're using heavy. You're using medium. Recovery speed minus 35%. A little bit worse. Heavy armor. You're using light armor. Maybe I should give you this instead. And light armor for you. 
Minus 25%, Constitution and Fine, Awards DR. Okay. They really, the creators really enjoyed putting all those traps here, I can tell. Yep. Oh, it won't go away. No, it will. Fine male armor. Oh, that's also rather nice for you. Uh, no, it's still medium. So maybe it will be better for you. Minus 35, minus 45. I mean... I do want him in heavier than light, light armor. Wait. Huh. For his own protection, really, because I am using him as, as a frontline. Maybe I should use you as a frontline as well, since you are. Yeah, I will. I mean, I will use you as a frontliner. And what I want to see is you in front. Okay. No, all of you. Come on. And this is a way down, so we don't go there yet. Oh, thank you for moving away. Really, I appreciate it. Okay, the three of you have Foxy. a lot of bones just waiting to come to life thank you to stand in one place we will be <laughs> we will be sneaking once the poison goes out because three traps in a row i get the message better late than never and of course it will be the last one hi a lone figure in tattered robes shuffles across the chamber, muttering under its breath. As you approach, the figure holds and swivels its head toward you. Its haggard visage is a labyrinth of wrinkles and sores overgrown by a moss-like beard. What's this? How disturbs Elix work? Its voice rattles and gurgles like that of a drowning man. You're Helix. Dalton sent me to look for a winner. He leans back and bursts into raucous laughter. His threadbare robes drift apart, revealing an amulet, and a ragged wound running from chest to throat. It sputters a black, viscous fluid on the floor with every cackle. That does fool is a lie. <laughs> I do hope he still doesn't regret for that <laughs> incident. It was so very long ago. What can you tell me about Dalton? Only that is a miracle. Or a joke. Oh, the good is that he's still alive. He picks a bloodied crust from his beard. The only thing he loved more than his fetching intent was the idea of his own legend. He said you killed Arwena and the rest of the North Fort Rangers. 
that he mentioned that they haunted me down like a rabbit dog. He adjusts his mouth eating ropes. I just wanted to continue my studies. Attitudes towards animacy were not what they are now, and necromancers have never met with much acceptance. But they're corpses now, and so am I. Surely that's all well enough behind us. Do you know where Rowena is? He seems to restrain another bout of chuckling. <laughs> oh, you could say that. If you were to retrieve my grimoire from Mordred, I'll let you in a secret. Alright, what do you need me to do? When Animans started gaining popularity, I came to the finance bay in a hope of finding a place where my research would meet me would meet with more acceptance. Worked at the Parkenbury Center for a few months when I met Mordred. He spits a glob of black blood on the floor. Let's just say Mordred and I didn't see eye to eye. Got so bad we were threatening to kill each other on a daily basis. <laughs> Obviously that bastard made good on his threat. I also jacked fingernail out on his oozing wound. Sank a dagger into my chest while sleeping and dumped my body in the catacombs. You use animacy to save yourself. <laughs> oh no. Heli quizzed a half throated hand. This is magic, and it took a great deal of rather timely preparation, I must say. Even so, it merely anchored my soul to this decaying husk. Nothing like the life that was stolen from me. Heli quizzed out a rattling sigh. And yet, you see what a little Anguafian magic can do. My mind is my own, my memory is fresh, and my work can continue. And Modred. Modred keeps all that is precious to him in a trunk in his laboratory. Just as he stole my grimoire, he offers you a key with a claw like hand. On your way to Brackenbury Sanitarium, then. Bring me my grimoire and my revenge, and you can have your winner. <laughs> he chokes on a burly chuckle. If there's something else, be on your way. What are those creatures behind you? Just a few personal projects. Sorry, so stuck in your mortal shells. Their flesh is as dead as mine, though their minds are not as well maintained. They flock to me like worms to tricks. They're not half as intelligent, but... He watches as one stumbles into a desk. They serve for amusement. What are you doing down here? Research. A hodgepodge of animacy and necromancy. I have peace and quiet as well as an abundant supply of subjects. Fare farewell then. Dust and cobwebs have been swept aside for various alchemical implements. Though coated with frost and grit, they look recently used. The scattered feverish knows the diverse animantic procedures and rites of necromancy. Now, back to sneaking. Oop, 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 oop. How did I manage to do that? Try this. Okay, they failed. What? Nope. Nice and quiet. Nope, I can get if it makes this. Rest easier. I hate you. Okay, and that goes back here. Is that all that's here? I think so, although... There's surely... A way over here, but... How? There might be a... Hidden wall here, hidden door here. Wait, go there, please. Because there surely is something behind here. I can even hear sounds. I heard something moving as well, that might have been it. No. Fire cast light in dark places. Hmm. 
That is interesting. What? what? I think I bugged the game. I don't think that should be possible. You see. See, if I try to walk past, nothing is happening. But they made it through. I'm like hell interested what happened here. A simple silken scarf is crumpled on the filthy flagstones. Essence radiates from it like heat. And the closer you get to it, the more you feel. A confusing mixture of joy, surprise and pain. Leave it alone for now. We cannot leave. Okay, can you? Yeah, you see, this definitely. I broke the game. Mm hmm. Okay, that's that is interesting for sure. So I can either, if I could get all of them on one side, it would be perfect. Uh, oh well, I'll end this part here because of that. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.